Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Ruben. Welcome to the channel. So about a week ago, I received a comment on one of my videos asking me to do a video on how a violently spinning pulsar would sound like. Now, if there's one thing I learned over the years is that describing audio is extremely subjective. What does a dinosaur sound like? Everybody has an idea, most probably fueled by Jurassic Park, but it's not like we have an actual recording of them. Or what does an alien sound like? We don't know, but everybody has an idea though. So all of that is based either on assumptions or movies or games, and that got me thinking. Um, what does a violently spinning pulsar sound like? Honestly, I have no clue. I have never seen one and also never heard a recording of one. But anyway, here's my interpretation of what one would sound like. Alright, so the patch is a bit too complex to start from scratch again, so let me just break down my process for you. I started out with a layer here called Sub. Uh, I wanted this rumbly texture in the background, um, and also something that I could control. So I have a noise generator here set to uh, key track smooth noise, and I'm using a macro to control the level. Now when you play this at a low pitch, you will get a nice little rumble. You probably can't even hear this if you're uh, on a uh, on a phone or an iPad or whatever. Um, so the next layer is the actual pulsar sound. So this is a noise generator where I'm using a uh, LFO table down here to control the slope, which pretty much just acts like a filter, um, which is reinforced by a sine wave here. Uh, and the sine wave gets a bit more character from a... Um, triangle wave down here uh, due to some phase modulation. Now all of this is going through a low pass filter which is also controlled by the LFO table down here. So this is the actual rotation sound of the pulsar. Um, now let's make it a bit more violent. So. I have this edge layer here, which has a wavetable oscillator set to a very low harmonic ratio, so 0 0.25. Um, it's just a random wavetable with lots of harmonics. I'm using the LFO table down here to um, control the level and also a um, macro up here to control that as well. <laughs> So I can just dial that in a bit. Now I have a final layer here called Crisp. And what Crisp does is it will add a bit more high-end, um, well, sparkle to it. Uh, it's supposed to be this electromagnetic interference kind of sound. So I'm using a square wave oscillator here with a pulse width set to, well, almost zero, so 0.3%. Um, level is also uh, very low. I'm controlling the level with a macro here, and also I'm using the LFO table down here to control the level as well, but then in opposite direction. So it goes the opposite direction of the actual uh, pulsar movement. Now you can't really hear this yet, but it will be uh, brought into the mix more when we start to do processing, especially by this uh, upward pr uh, compression that we're doing. So the first thing um, I did when doing the processing is start to emulate like a binaural movement of something actually rotating around your head. Um, so I used Snap Heap for this. I used um, two parallel lanes with two Haas effects where I'm modulating the, uh, the delay lines for the left and the right channel individually in opposite directions using the LFO, LFO table down here. I'm doing the same thing to two low pass filter just to shave a little bit of high frequency content off of the top um, to kind of emulate the sounds being in front of you or behind you so to emphasize this uh, rotational movement. 
So next up is a multi-pass in which I used a convolver to add a bit more character in the mid frequencies and I'm using some upwards dynamics um, in the high frequency domain. This will really boost those uh, cr crisp sounds. <laughs> So this is going in opposite direction of the uh, of the pulsar sound. Um, thought it gives it a bit more character. Next up is bit crush, just a tiny bit for some extra grit. Then an OTT. Then I use my custom shimmer effect. Um, I'm not using this to actually do pitch shifting, um, but I do have the feedback set to um, set to the maximum. So this will give a nice little tail to the sound. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to how to create this uh, shimmer effect. Uh, I made a video about that last year, I think. So next up is a disperser, also being modulated by the LFO table. Then some distortion, a flanger, another snap heap in which I use two parallel lanes, one with a pitch shifter at plus seven and the other one with a bit of distortion. This pitch shifter actually gives a lot of richness to the sound. Check the difference. All right, then next up, I'm putting everything through the impulse response of a cookie jar. Then another convolver, um, well, to add some reverb, actually, I uh, stretch this to 200%, so uh, the reverb will be long, but also darker because of the uh, stretching here. And then finally, I used Snap Heap, um, used this custom pad effects uh, thing I created a while ago. Uh, I usually use this on very lush strings and pads, so it's a nice little ensemble and chorus and reverb and um, those kind of things. But I'm just using this slightly on this sound and it works rather well. <laughs> And then finally, I'm using uh, another one of these uh, snap heaps that does the rotation, but this one goes in opposite direction, so to emphasize the rotation even more. And then finally, a limiter. That's it for today. If you like my sounds and like what I do, you can buy my preset pack. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.